Welcome to Holtwell AME Church, where we believe in owning our community. Our pastor is the Reverend Jarrett B. Washington, and our first family is Lady Deronda Washington and Braylon J.L. Join pastor on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 6.30 a.m. for morning prayer and devotion. For an interactive live Bible study, join pastor and the ministerial staff on Saturdays at 9 a.m., for our Bible studies. Now a message from our pastor. Good morning, Hopewell African Methodist Episcopal Church, also known as the House of Hope Hemingway. I am Pastor Jarrett Britton Washington. I'm First Lady Deronda Washington. I'm Braylon J. Washington. And just like Braylon, what can we say with excitement but happy Mother's Day to each and every one of the mothers that God has blessed all of us to experience at some point in our lives. We thank God for phenomenal mothers. We thank God for amazing women. We thank God for praying mothers who prayed many of us through all the things that we had to go through in our lives. On a personal note, I have to thank God for my wonderful spouse, my wonderful partner in ministry. I thank God for you, Deronda, and I must say to you publicly, Happy Mother's Day to you. Oh, well, there's no thought for the week because we have a special surprise from some special people later in the video. But on a personal note, I would like to honor and praise my mother on this Mother's Day, Gloria Corbin, for being such an amazing woman and an example of how a mother should be, as well as my mother in love, Lorraine Jenkins Washington. So from our house to your house, we say... Happy Mother's Day. And as we all know, the third Sunday in July is always our friends and family day. And so as First Lady just said, we have a special message from some people that I'm sure you know. Good morning, House of Hope. I am Teresa Fulton Johnson, and I'd like to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day, especially mine, from my family to your family. Good morning, House of Hope. I am Desmond Sumter, and I'd like to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day, from my family to yours. Happy Mother's Day. Good morning, Hopewell. It's me, Joshua. I just wanted to extend a big Happy Mother's Day wish to each and every one of you, including my own mother, Miss Cheryl Patterson, to all of my aunts, to all of my cousins, to each and every one of you. Um, truly, the House of Hope is what it is because of the mothers of the church. I can look forward to a random inbox message at any time. Um, how you doing? We're praying for you. We're thinking about you. And that makes a big difference with me being down here in New Orleans, seemingly by myself, but never alone. So I just wanted to say Happy Mother's Day to all of you. I love you, and I can't wait to see you all when we get back together again. God bless. Good morning, House of Hope. I'm Jensuela Barkers, and I would like to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day from my family to yours. Good morning, House of Hope. My name is Morshell Davis, and I would like to wish all mothers a very happy special Mother's Day from my family to yours, and a special one to Miss Betty L. Davis. Good morning, House of Hope. My name is Monet Smith, and today I just want to say a happy Mother's Day to all of you beautiful mothers of Hopewell Amy Church. I just want to say thank you for all your love and support and your prayers, and thank you for your words of wisdom that have gotten me through my first year of college. I want to say thank you for all of the smiles, the hugs, and the kisses, and I want to say a happy Mother's Day to my beautiful mother. Thank you for being in my corner. Thank you for loving me unconditionally, and thank you for being that strong figure that I needed in my life and from my family to yours I just want to say a happy Mother's Day and I love you all to all happy Mother's Day and be blessed and be saved we love you all we love you happy Mother's Day happy Mother's Day <laughs> good morning House of Hope I'm Latasha Aiken and I would like to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day from my family to your family happy Mother's Day Good morning, House of Hope. My name is LaShayla Turner, and I would like to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day from my family to your family. Good morning, House of Hope. I'm Brittany, and I'm Whitney. we just like to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day. You guys are such an important part of the family unit as a whole, and we just want to say we really appreciate you. And to our own mother, Eunice Marine, we love you to the moon and back. 
again, happy Mother's Day. Good morning, House of Hope. I am Temple Quatino, and I would like to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day from my family to yours. Hello, I would like to wish all mothers a happy Mother's Day, especially to my mother, Brenda Pauling Palmer. I can remember the love of my mother, the encouragement of my mother, the touch of my mother, the nurturing of my mother, even the correction of my mother. I can recall when I was a little girl, my sisters and I, my mother would fix our hairs that night before, get us ready for church on Sunday morning, and we would wait patiently as they got ready for church so that we could go to Sunday school. I can also remember my mother, if she felt like she needed to ask for forgiveness for something, I can recall my mother coming into my room, my sister's room and I, and she would ask us for forgiveness. I've learned love and forgiveness from my mother. Good morning, House of Hope. Uh, I am Brayla, and I am, I'm going to wish you a happy Mother's Day to, from my family to yours. And I drew, I drew this big picture of, of the Mother's Day, and it was all for you guys. Love you all. Good morning, House of Hope. My name is Tyson Minchin. I'm a current student at USC Upstate in Spartanburg, South Carolina. I'd like to wish everybody a happy Mother's Day from my family to your family. Good morning, House of Hope. I'm Trinette Vereen, and I would like to wish all mothers a happy Mother's Day from my family to yours. Good morning, House of Hope. This is Morales. I would like to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day from my family to yours. Love you. Bye-bye. Good morning. Good morning, House of Hope. It's Terrell. This is Ryan. Just want to wish all the beautiful mothers a happy Mother's Day. Say happy Mother's Day. Good morning, House of Hope. I am Kinsley Reed, and I would like to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day. From my family to your family, happy Mother's Day. We thank God for each and every one of you on this morning. And most of all, we thank God for each and every mother where we can say Happy Mother's Day again to each and every one of you. To my wife and my partner in ministry, Lady Deronda, I just want to thank God for you being a great mother. To our daughter, Braylon, I honor you and I love you so much. And to each and every one of you listening, may God bless you and may God keep you today. Good morning. I found myself in the New Testament Gospel of John, chapter number 19, and looking at verse number 25, where the Word of God says that now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother, the Word of God says, and the disciple whom he loved standing by her, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to his disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. In these next few moments that are mine, I'd like to share with you the message. There's a mother at your cross. When we began to peer into the Gospel of John, we come to learn that of the four Gospel writers, John is the only one who gives a record of Mary's presence at the cross. If you have even a small understanding of the biblical text, you realize that it would be expected that Jesus' mother, Mary, would be there during the time of his crucifixion in Jerusalem because she would be there for the Passover. Recording that earlier in the Luke text, the writer writes and tells us that every year Jesus' parents would travel to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. We are also to understand from a closer reading of the text that Joseph, Jesus' earthly father, was presumed to have been dead by this point because Jesus had already begun his ministry. And therefore Mary was to travel to Jerusalem without the assistance, the aid, or even the attention of her husband by this time in the biblical text. Mary, the mother of Jesus, therefore, by circumstances, finds herself in a situation where she is in Jerusalem when her son is in trouble, arrested, tried, condemned, and now dying on the old rugged cross. 
We as the people of God are now in the Easter season, and so we understand what had to happen by virtue of the text. By now, we all understand that Jesus was sentenced to death on the cross. We all understand that the same people who were crying out, holy, 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 had now become the people who were saying, crucify him. And all of us have an understanding that they whipped him and that they beat him and that they placed a crown of thorns on his head and placed him in between two thieves. But somehow would get lost in the sauce of the scripture is that Mary, the now mother of Jesus, was right there and she witnessed what had been done to her son. Can you imagine the very tears that she cried? Can you feel the pain of a mother losing her son while this world seemed to go on as business as usual? I mean, when we really think about it, where was Ahmaud Arbery's mother when they ran him down and they lynched him? How about Botham Jean's mama when they shot him in his own apartment? What about Alton Sterling's mother when he was, all he was trying to do was sell CDs? And Mike Brown's mama when he was walking from a corner store and Steph Stephon Clark's mama when he was pulling out his cell phone and Tywanza Sanders' mama who we know was with him in Bible study and Trayvon Martin's mama when he was walking in an apartment complex with a hoodie and some Skittles in his hands. Haven't mothers had to see so much tragedy in their children's lives? And so now even in the recorded text, Mary, the mother of Jesus, is watching as they kill her son. And in this text, mother the Mary, the mother of Jesus, has to stand there close by his side as they hang him on a cross. She is undoubtedly heartbroken and she needs to be consoled by her friends. And so the gospel writer says that many women were there watching from a distance and they had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. But it is in the John recording of the text that we learn that even these women had names. And I believe that Many times we need to call the role. We need to invoke their presence. We need to say the names of those people who stood by us when we were on our cross. See, when we were on the cross, we need to understand that even on the cross, God will send people there to help carry us through. I'm just here to tell you that every cross has somebody's mama there. In the text, we learn that we have Salome, who we learn is Jesus's mother sister, and she is the mother of Zebedee's sons. Salome, you remember, was the same mother that asked Jesus to have her sons to sit on his right and on his left in the kingdom. She is the same woman that after asking the question, Jesus had to rebuke her according to the text. But here she is at the foot of the, so of the cross consoling Mary, Jesus's mother and her sister. There's a lesson that we all should learn from a mother like Salome, and that is that everything we do is not always going to be right and pleasing in the sight of God, and sometimes God has to rebuke us for the very things that we do, but even, my brothers and sisters, in our rebuke, we are still God's chosen, and therefore we can't allow the rebuke to block the blessing that we have called and been called to do. Even though Jesus had to correct her, the Bible says Salome is still at the cross. The Bible says there's also a woman by the name of Clopas who is also at the cross, but her real name would become Mary. Finally, we have Mary Magdalene, who was a Jewish woman who, according to the four Gospels, traveled with Jesus as one of his followers and was a witness to his crucifixion, his burial, and his resurrection. She's the same Mary that Jesus had to heal from a demonic ex ex exposure. She's the same woman that he was called her his friend and that she loved him with her whole life. What we see there is that these mothers were at the cross watching Jesus transition from his earthly life to his heavenly being. Here Jesus is dying in agony, gasping for his breath, being taunted by folk who turned their back on him and he still looks out into the crowd and he sees that his mother is there, the one who comforts him when he was a child, the one who listened to him as an adult. She's there crying at the cross. There is a mother 
at the cross. He sees his mother at the foot of the cross who is heartbroken, weeping inconsolably, and his heart goes out to his mother. And in my mind's imagination, help me somebody, I just want to thank God for the mothers who are dedicated to their children, that they would be there even when their children need them the most. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for all of us and there's a cross for you and there's a cross for me. I'm here to tell you that we all will have crosses to bear in our lives. We may not have gotten up on a cross to be crucified, but we ought to thank God that despite every cross, every issue, every struggle, every trial, every problem, there's always still been a mama who loved the hell out of our lives. I'm a living witness that I'm a better person today because I had a good mother. No, my mama nor your mama was a perfect mother. But every time I look back over my life, I can declare it was my mama who prayed me through some of my weakest moments. She was there at my cross. Don't get me wrong, sometimes maybe even our parents will misunderstand us, will disapprove of our decisions. But sometimes it's our parents that even can be the ones that will hurt us, make us feel in adequate or abuse our self-esteem, but in the end, it's the ones that God gave us to mature us and to keep us in every season of our lives. The life that Jesus led is a clear indication that many times your family, even your mothers, even your parents will misunderstand you. Because when I began to study Jesus and study his relationship with his mother Mary, who was now at the cross, the Holy Ghost revealed revealed to me John chapter 2 where we remembered that the wedding of Cana happened where Jesus would perform what is called his first miracle. But we recall that Jesus had to turn the water into wine because at his mother's request and behest during the wedding. But Jesus looked at his mother and said, Mother, my time has not yet come. Yes, his mother Mary loved him, but his mother misunderstood his time. Timing in the body of Christ is so important to our well-being and to where we're trying to go in life. When you learn to move in God's time and in God's season, then you will understand where your real blessing comes. So Jesus, according to the text, loved his mother, but his mother misunderstood what God was doing at that point in his life. And so when we fast forward from John 2 all the way to John 19, to where Jesus is now hanging on the cross, we see that the same woman that misunderstood his first miracle is is about to be there when he birthed his next miracle. I don't know who I'm talking to even at this moment in your life, but sometimes the very people who were there in the beginning won't be there in the end, but you ought to thank God that your mother stood by your side. See, at the finale of Jesus' life, we see that Jesus still had a tender love for his mother. As Jesus begins to die on the cross, he begins to settle every earthly obligation as best as he can. And the Bible says that while he is on the cross, he looks over and says, dear woman, here is your son. And now here is your mother. What Jesus is doing at this point in the text is that he is letting us know that our responsibility to our mothers even goes beyond death. What am I saying to somebody on Mother's Day 20 and 20 is that even if your mama is gone today, you still have a responsibility to live your life uh, so that your mama would be pleased even in heaven. Uh, don't you think that just because she's transitioned, uh, just because things are not the way they used to be, uh, that you can just go ahead and live your life any way you want to live it. Uh, but when we look at Jesus on the cross, uh, he was literally setting things in order so that when he left this place, uh, that his mother would have his well-being and a 
attention, uh, even from earth to the grave, now to resurrection. Uh, and for those of you who can say that your mother is still alive, we too have to live our lives the way our parents raised us, despite what kind of parents we may have had. Don't you ever get too big that you can't thank God for your mother. Don't you ever get too big that you think you got here by yourself. For the truth is, it's where you are today is only because somebody prayed for you and somebody had you on your mind. I promise you, at every cross you face, there will be a mother. Now, your cross will not be my cross. We all have crosses to bear. We all have things that we will have to go through to get to where God wants us to be. But what I am so invested in at this very moment is to help you understand that at your cross, there will be somebody's mother praying you through. I want you to know, brother, I want you to know, sister, that we're living in a difficult time. We're living in a time where some days we don't know if we're up and some days we don't know if we're down. But what I can truly say on a day like today is that if we put our focus and our attention on Jesus and we recognize him to be ruler and recognize him to be the one who covers us despite every transition, we can say without a shadow of a doubt that there's somebody at my cross. Now again, your cross may be different from even someone in your household's cross, but guess what? We all are gonna have a cross. I could have literally spent this time talking about a virtuous woman. I could have spent this time talking about how her children rise and call her blessed. But what the Holy Ghost had me to say to you this morning, oh God, I thank you, Jesus is that we all are going to go through some things, even on Mother's Day. But God says in the midst of it all, there's somebody at your cross who's believing God for you and recognizing that what you're going through is not the end of your story. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody receive that even in your spirit right now, that what you're having to face is not the end of your story. In fact, I believe God is saying in this season that he still will complete that thing that has been started in you, even until the day of Christ Jesus. And so whatever you're going through in your life right now, I want you to stop it. I want you to stop thinking about it. I want you to throw it out of your mind because what God will do is God will settle you and God will literally deliver you in the midst of that struggle. Because when I read the text of John chapter 19 even closer, I come to understand that God particularly made it so that in the midst of this crowd, Jesus would focus on these women who were mothers to him. I want you to think about every mother you may have had. They may still be alive. They may still not be here. But wherever they are, I want you to think about the things they instilled in your life. And I want you to begin to remember those people Remember those words. Remember how it strengthened you when you were weak and allow the very strength of what you can remember. See, you have to have a memory. Remember what you can remember and allow that to push you towards your destiny. I thank God today that there is a mother at my cross because when I'm going through, I believe there's somebody who's going to be there to pray me through it. You're watching today, and you may not be saved. I don't want you to move another second, do another thing, until you've accepted Christ as your personal Savior. I know it's a difficult season we're in, but how many of us really know that even in difficulty, God gets all the glory? I'm thankful today because as you're watching, I'm believing God is healing, delivering, and restoring folk even right now. I'm thankful because in the midst of all that we have to go through, God is still God. And so as we look to God, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every life that's being connected right now. 
God, I declare in your power and in your glory and in your authority that you're doing it. And so, God, I plead the very blood of Jesus that was poured out on very Calvary's cross, that, God, you would be healer because you are Rapha, that, God, you would be provider because you are Jira, and that, God, you would be Jehovah because you are eternal. I bless you, I praise you, and, God, I honor you for who you are and, God, for what you're doing. So now, God, use us for your glory. And then, God, if I'm not saved today, hallelujah, Jesus, Hey, God, I bless you. If I'm not saved today, that, God, I would give my life over to you so that you would use me for your glory. Father, I thank you. I honor you. And, God, I bless you. Because at whatever cross I may face, there's somebody praying for me. God, I thank you for this prayer. In the precious name of Jesus, I say amen. Well, my brothers and my sisters, Children of God, I thank you for what God is doing in your life. I bless God for what God's doing because I know that he did not have to do what he's done. And because he's doing it, I just give him the honor. Hallelujah. I give him the glory because I recognize that in this season of difficulty, God is still God. And so many of you continue to inquire, how can I be of support? To this ministry. I'm here to confirm for you that our stewardship and finance team is actually already at the church, ready to receive your gifts of tithes and offerings. They will be there until 12 noon on today. And if by chance you're not able to make it, you can always be a blessing by visiting our website, hopewellamec.org, and clicking the tab that says Give Today. Or you might even be able to utilize the cell phone or iPad or tablet to go to your Google Play or your Apple Store and download the Givelify app and find Hopewell AME Church of Hemingway, the House of Hope, and give through Givelify. We also recognize that some of you would opt to mail your gifts of tithes and offerings and with that information will also appear for you to be able to mail. We as a people of God understand the power of reaping and sowing. And we know that in this season, if we know how to sow, then we will expect a great harvest in our reaping. Many of us are living testimonies that because I give to God, God gives so much back to me. We recognize that giving is not just your finances, but God is not just a bill payer, but God is also the one who heals, sets free, and delivers. And so we thank God for what God is doing in this season. And again, always continue to support our ministry uh, by participating in our porch ministry. We thank God that this porch ministry is now about to blow up and take off into the nation because there are people who I hear from on a daily basis saying I was inspired to put something on somebody's porch and I don't even live in Hemingway. God is just that good of a God. Because we never know that the porch we bless may be the setup for the blessing we need. And so I bless God for your life. And remember, happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you. And truly, I thank God for there is a mother at our cross. God bless you and have a wonderful week. We are so happy that you were able to join us on today. Remember to spend some time with the ones you love, whether it's your mother, grandmother, godmother, still practicing social distancing. And also, please remember to share this video with the ones that you love and also to subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button and subscribe to this page. Anyone you would like to say Happy Mother's Day to, Braylon? Happy Mother's Day, Mina. Happy Mother's Day, Momo. We love all of the mothers. We thank God for the mothers. We thank God for you. And so from our house to your house, happy, happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Happy Mother's Day. Ways to give. You may use your GiveLify app and search for Holtwell AME Church, or you may also visit HoltwellAME.org for online giving. In person, you may meet with one of our stewardship and finance committee members between 10 and noon on Sundays. Prayer and devotion. Join Pastor Washington live at 6.30 a.m. Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays for prayer and devotion. 
Our special worship link will be sent directly to church and community members on Sunday mornings for worship. Study with the pastor and the ministerial staff live 9 a.m. on Saturdays for a riveting Bible study. Hope well, we love you. Continue to be blessed. Until then, continue to serve God in spirit and in truth.